Hello! Hello everyone, I'm Steve. Mark's around. Say hi, Mark. Hi, everybody! And this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back. And happy Thursday. We're getting there. Almost Friday. Almost Friday. It'll be an interesting next seven days, I think, here in the U.S. We got a lot going on. There's been a lot going on for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. So I hope you are well. I hope you are safe. Look after yourselves. Look after the people you care about. Um, things have been interesting here at home. I haven't been feeling so well. I'm feeling a little bit better this evening. Thank you for those who sent well wishes. Um, there's many people in much worse situations than me. Um, I'm going to get checked out tomorrow at one of the local clinics my doctor, doctor recommended for a uh, cold flu. I don't know what kind of testing they'll do. I don't even think there's any suggestion of getting, you know, the COVID test or anything. So I'm okay. However, I'm in a bit of a mood. So compound that with the spookiness that is Myth Cynthia Beaumont, and um, we'll see how today goes. So we're going to continue our series with caretaking, caregiving, um, after the fact. And for anyone who's not familiar, we talk about uh, creator Cynthia Beaumont and follow her channel. Now, I was a follower of her channel for years and um, started doing reviews of her channel, weekly reviews, checking in with how her channel has changed. Uh, started when her husband became very ill, uh, Thomas Beaumont. He has since passed away, and he passed away, I guess, now seven months ago? He passed away early spring, I think, right when um, things started to get very scary in the United States with the first wave. So he passed away, and she's been finding the channel on her own, in her own way. At the time he passed away, allegedly it was her only source of income, so she was throwing anything at the wall to see if it would stick. Richard Simmons videos, unboxings, Dollar Tree stuff, uh, cooking what things, fetishes. socks. Uh, oh, there were socks this week, we will, we will talk. Uh, all sorts of different stuff, all sorts of different things. Uh, so she tried a number of different directions. So last week, where we had left off, there was some, of course, drama. She was falling into a pattern of putting out a lot of videos every day that were not getting a lot of views. And then there would be like a drama video or a clapback or a tea time video. And they would get a higher number of views, maybe one to 2,000, some two to 3,000 views on those. And then there'd be other videos in the middle. The pattern's not that different than, than Mark and ours. The difference is her channel is about five times the size. So, you know, compare that to that. Uh, there was more news on her stalker, stalker, um, who was identified as Jimmy and uh, some mail that's supposed to be coming to to him and her regarding some legal action that I guess she was planning to take. And um, there was a lot more videos last week. She was supposed to be taking a break. She was going to, like, step away, which, to which I think many people assumed, ka-ching, Tommy's life insurance came in, or she came into some money otherwise, and it was like, well, I don't really need to be on YouTube right now, so whatever, bye. Uh, then maybe she looked at how the money dropped and decided to, to bring it back up. So that's speculation, of course. She hasn't said anything because she'll tell you up and down, left, right, and center about her finances when they're bad. But when things are okay, oh, just keep assuming they're bad and keep, the, keep it coming. So I went through this weekend. We did every video one by one because I wanted to get back into the thorough swing of things. So I doubled back a little over where we left off. Sigma Liquid Lipstick in Venom. How appropriate, lipstick and venom. A lot of these are beauty boxes, and some of them are just ASMR or pictures of squirrels and skunks. So we will move through some of them quickly. Next video, Instacart, $178 spent. Now she says she usually doesn't show the Instacart ones. I wouldn't show things if I wanted to hide how much money I had too. So that's, you know, interesting. Uh, she said she was very disappointed because they didn't have Sunkissed. They were out. You guys hear that in the back? You guys with the checkbooks and no common sense? Okay. Um, favorite are her smart ones. I knew she was a Lean Cuisine junkie because Mark's a Lean Cuisine junkie, and I would compare between the two of them. But Lean Cuisines, they're not that much more expensive than smart ones. They're a little more. It's like 50 cents per thing. She buys in bulk, though. She treats every store like Sam's Club because she doesn't drive, so she doesn't get out as much. Not that people don't not have cars and still find ways to eat. I mean, I don't see people who are skeletal on the bus because they can only make it to the supermarket every so often. Other people manage. Um, but she buys in bulk because she only gets out maybe every two weeks or so. Put a pin in that, though, too. So 
she gives a quick tip for anyone who gets things delivered via Instacart or I suppose other delivery services. She had made an initial order for about $230, $250. And you can add a tip to that, 10%, whatever, to the person who's bringing you your stuff. Well, they didn't have everything on the order. So the order came down to like $170 or so. And she always tips cash. That's a preference, whatever. But she said, make sure you don't get screwed over tipping. Make sure you only tip on what they bring you, not on the original order. So, um, just, just so you don't get screwed on over tipping people. I remember, I think a lot of people do, because it was such a spectacle, even for Cynthia, that when Instacart, Tommy was alive and sick, and the Instacart order came, and Tommy had tipped the person beforehand, and Cynthia wants to tip after because you've got to find a problem to pay less. And there was one rotten potato in a bag, and she lost her shit. I mean, I think even she would have to look back at that and be a little embarrassed, because it was outrageous even for her. It was outrageous how upset she was. And then looked at Tommy and said, and what are you going to do about it? Nothing. I have to take care of it. Wow. Totally emasculating, but, you know, rest in peace. Um, she lice all all her groceries, and she's on a diet now. So I know a Cynthia diet, because that's when I first started getting into Cynthia, because of her diets and her weight loss journey. And she lives on egg whites, spinach, um, lean cuisines, diet soda, uh, coffee with a lot of equal in it. I think she cut back from eight to six to five. She might go back to eight for spite. Um, I don't know. Uh, and she said she's not talking about her diet because everyone has something to say. That's what she wants. She wants people to talk about her diet. You know, you peek to the left and you see Chantal getting a lot of views and not a lot of drama around people talking about her diet. And you think, well, I won't talk about mine. I don't know if anyone's going to care. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, they might. Um, <clears throat> and she said she wanted to get about two weeks worth of food. That's reasonable, I guess. You know, if you haven't done a large trip in a while. Next, tea time. They're coming to get you. Mm-hmm. So she's got the crazy purple lash thing. Crazy. Some, I, like, madam? Like, Waylon, Waylon Flowers and madam? Like that? I saw a picture of that floating, and I thought, wow, that's a little different. Um, very drag queen sort of-esque in, in that way. Very grand, very elaborate. And, I mean, do you. Definitely do you, but um, it, it's a it's a look people will react to a look. You know what I mean? So uh, there was another psycho Jimmy rant that she went on, and she's looking at herself. She's not looking at the camera. You know. So this is the part where okay, and she's padding for time talking about skunks and cats. This is the part where now I think there's a a little bit of a split. And talking about Cynthia going through, I mentioned before there's a point where you make a judgment about her where, well, if you are going to pass judgment, and I, I guess I am, um, what explains her behavior? Does she have a mental illness? Is this just part of her personality? Is it a moral judgment? People have thrown the word evil around. Uh, you could probably make a case for any of them. For the same reason people say, why does Chantal eat people? You know, there's you can make a good case for a lot of the reasons, the mental, the, the, the moral, all of it. Um, but when she starts to talk about Jimmy and she starts to talk about the consequences that she believes he's going to have or what's going to happen, or that she's going to parole hearings every time he comes up to make sure that he stays in jail um, and the vandalism charges for taping something to a building and putting something. I'm, you know, I, I can appreciate that she operates on on spite. And if she, and if a crime has been committed against her, it's, it's obviously absolutely her right to want to pursue it. But I don't think the kind of consequences she's expecting are going to happen to him. I, I don't. And we'll see later that the reason that she wants these consequences is because she's so fearful. So fearful that she goes to the park. <laughs> so we'll get, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, she's also complaining a lot the super, I guess the super son or son-in-law lifts, waits, and it's con inconvenient to her. So... <laughs> that, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. People can't do things when she wants to do them. Next, all new Dollar Tree decor. The, the, the barrettes. Okay. Okay. Everyone's got their thing. Okay. I wear a hat. Primarily because I'm bald and my head gets cold. But the hats, I like the meow hat. It's cute. It was a gift. It's nice. Um, the barrettes are looking more and more like a hat. They're getting so close together and there's so many of them. It's looking like one of those, like, jeweled side piece eggshell things that they would wear once upon a time except 
not because it's stuck to and god bless her god bless her in another video there's something going on with her hair too so it's dollar tree stuff it's it's crap it's all crap it's candles and trinkets and nonsense nothing anybody needs next walmart fall beauty box so she ended up getting possibly double because she didn't want to miss out and wanted to get both and she orders the young lady's box so she'll get lipstick because if you get the older woman's box all you get is wrinkle cream so um like i said she may have double ordered didn't want to miss her chance to get a product and not get it at all but remember not to over tip <laughs> um just just so you know so it was a, a beauty unboxing. There's a few of those this week. Walmart, there's a couple other ones she got as gifts. There's a food box. There's a couple of those things floating around. Next, tea time. What will I spill today? Now, in three, I think, of these videos, three, maybe four, there's little emoticons up here that have, well, I got her up here because I'm so obsessed. Let me see. Let's make sure we get it right. It has soon with a little arrow and then a policeman, and then a little police car, and then it has Jimmy written on it. So she's like throwing out emoticon warnings in the thumbnail, but actually only mentions it in one of the videos very, very briefly. Um, clickbait? Eh. Nah. Yeah. I mean, I don't care what she, what's going on with her much otherwise. I'm kind of curious to see how this pans out, um, but not enough to watch 30 minutes and hear 30 seconds. I'll wait. I'll either watch it somewhere else or I'll hear about it, you know? Um, today I took it on <laughs> to watch. That's why I was disappointed because there was nothing to learn. And you're welcome for the $17 and 85 cents in AdSense, Cynthia, for Christ's sake. Could you fit another commercial? I'm happy to pay you because this is reciprocal, but seriously. So what will I spill today in the tea time? So she talks about watching Japanese news. It's NHK World Japan. And she likes getting her news from other sources because it's not all anti-Trump and da 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 da. Cynthia's made her politics known, or at least what politics she wants people to have thought of known, as if she doesn't live off. Never mind. I'm not talking about Cynthia's politics. Um, she talks about Asian culture a lot, East Asian culture, and how she's a fan of of Japanese culture and 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 X Y and Z. Uh, it's not uncommon for Cynthia to slip in and out of confusing certain, uh, like things that are from Japan versus things that are from China or North or South Korea. She kind of blends them together. Not in a rude way, but in a kind of a ignorant, not like, in an ignorant like you don't know any better. Like, she makes some sweeping generalizations, and I have to think back to my grandfather. For example, when she's talking about Japan, she says some things that are, I want to say complimentary, but they're also very broad sweeping generalizations, however complimentary they may be. For example, she's talking about... Um, Japanese people saying, you know, how she would love to live there. Um, they're very positive people. They're very welcoming. They're like she, all these kind things. It's not, you know, if you said to me, Steve, you're a vi very kind, welcoming person. I'd be like, well, thank you. And then if you said, you know, all white people are like that. I'm like, I can tell you that's not true. I can tell you that myself. My grandfather, rest his soul, my father's father, um, would say the similar things about the word he would use was not, um, he wouldn't say African-American, person of color, black. He didn't use the N word. Um, but he had a, there was other language locked in time and space. I think the word was colored that he actually used. And he would say things like, oh, they're all so good at sports. So it wasn't hate language necessarily, but it was a big generalization summing up an entire group of people based on one or two characteristics. That still feels kind of rude <laughs> to me. But, um, I don't think ill-intended, but a little ignorant. Again, in, in the not know any better kind of sense. At any rate. And then she starts, I don't know, just going on and on and on and on and on. What is she going on about this time? Some guy she used to follow on YouTube who was talking about how Vegas is destroyed and Black Lives Matter came through and must have ruined it and all the gang members are coming in from L.A. Um, I don't know. Next, there was a fan mail. This was eyelashes. She had the eyelashes on. She got gifts of batteries. It's the only practical gift she got in a while. Um, she got a gold bread on top of her head that says queen. It looks like the kind of thing that you would see, like, if someone had a hoop earring and it said queen in the middle, kind of like that. Or if it was a very large chain around a person's neck and it said queen in gold. Uh, yeah, it's a little garish. 
she had some pumpkin lights and I think it was from two of her regulars. There's a woman whose name pops up all the time. I don't need to, if I have said her name in this video, I apologize to her and I'm not going to try to say it again. Um, there's a woman who has a sister and they send a lot of stuff to Cynthia repeatedly. Um, it's in the thousands. It would have to be in the thousands of dollars worth of food, um, clothing, knickknacks, candles, all sorts of different stuff. That's their choice. I completely don't understand it. And Cynthia would never graciously decline. She will never say, no, thank you, that's enough. She will just continue to accept it. Um, there's something weird on both ends of that from my, uh, from my perspective. But at any rate, she will come up again. Wildcats play with catnip. That's it. That's exactly what it sounds like. Five, they're not, they're feral. Let's not mince words here. Five feral cats are playing outside. Don't they have the, um, what is it? They have it around here. They catch the feral cats and then they spay or neuter them and then release them back out. So it's, there's at least some like population control in the, in the community. I've seen it on that Cat Whisperer show guide. And I know we have one or two in Scranton where you can take a cat that's not even, you know, and get it taken care of. I guess they don't, I guess they don't have it there. Or she doesn't make use of it or doesn't know where to go or doesn't care enough to do it, you know. There's people who love their animals. Love their animals, you know. Um, but they're not really even her animals. I think she thinks they're her animals. But, I don't know. She's just minding them. She has different food for all of them. We got freaking peanuts for the squirrels. She, should, she brought like a whole snack bag to the park. Let's get ready together. She puts on out iPads and some makeup. You didn't miss anything. Dollar Tree false eyelashes. Now these look like, according to her, something a drag queen would wear. She is right. And this is when I wish Cynthia was a different kind of person. Because Cynthia, being six feet tall and kind of broad build, would look spectacular in camp drag. Spectacular. And she'd probably go for it because she fancies herself, I think, kind of a, a very accepting kind of, you know, go with the flow. As far as LGBTQ stuff, she fancies herself to be very, you know, wide open with it. And if she didn't have such a, if she wasn't so self-important and wasn't so, she could probably have a lot of fun doing it. Once upon a time, we all could have probably had a lot of fun doing that, you know, if she'd be a sport about it. But she takes herself so damn seriously. Um, yeah. And then there's, you know, people have different choices. I'm okay with taking some things from the Dollar Tree. One could make an argument. I wouldn't, but one could that putting anything that close to your eye from a Dollar Tree could be dangerous. But I've taken the Advil from there. So again, that's a personal preference, I would say. I've eaten their food too. You know, it's okay. Ugh, how far did we get? <laughs> We're getting there. It's okay. Hot cocoa, but it's tea time. Let's spill. Again with the icons. Please soon jimmy up in the corners uh cynthia okay the barrettes and the bleached hair and the split ends there's a relationship that is happening there i don't know much about hair obviously i gave myself a split dye shaved it and my scalp was half black and half orange so you know i'm on the same page as you i'm no better than you when it comes to hair but that soft as butter stage is right before it snaps off and pulling the barrettes out is snapping it more it's going to be a big white fro you're not going to need to cut it because it's going to break off. Um, your hair, your choice. But, you know, for how much he bleaches her hair, I don't think it's that bad. But, no, it's that bad. It's that bad. I guess the ponytail is probably a better choice. So, she's fatigued because she's been up for 12 hours. And um, she uh, says she's not a snoop. Now, I take exception to the idea that Cynthia is not a snoop. Because she seems to know a lot about what the neighbors are doing what the super's doing, what the super's son is doing, what people in her building do for work, um, what people are doing outside as far as weightlifting, then what the neighbor is doing, coughing, all sorts of stuff. And when you live alone and have nothing to do all day and you hear other voices, you'd probably tune in. You know, I, I suspect that. But I wouldn't start creating narratives out of what I heard necessarily unless I was extremely bored. Um, you know, it's fun to make up stories to excite yourself, but that doesn't mean they're true, you know, just because you hear bits and pieces. And again, Cynthia dealing with what I think is a little bit of paranoia trends into the land in my head of mental illness. That's the perspective I kind of come from. When you come to things about people, Cynthia thinks people talk about her, that they're coming to get her, um, that they're out to get her. 
the um, incident that's going on with Jimmy, I think to her, vindicated every paranoid thought she ever had. So now when she thinks someone's talking about her, they are, whether they are or they aren't, because she feels like she's been proven right and has been right all along. So she's in a very uncomfortable spot at the moment. You would think until the drone came. So anyway, she thinks the neighbors are doing laundry for money in the basement and that it's not right. And she doesn't care, just enough to mention it. And Jim Boy, who's, I guess, the wait person, is here late in the day, and it bothers her that people live their lives without her blessing or permission. Uh, Cynthia talks about her views on piercing, parenting, hair color. No thank you. No thank you. I, I don't normally give parenting tips. I work with teenagers, but I work with them for an hour a week. If I had to spend more than an hour a week with a teenager, I don't know if my opinion would be the same. So... Cat versus skunk. This was a video. There was a whole video. Cat versus skunk. Just mount the camera and walk away. Um, there was, it wasn't a fight. You know, it wasn't a cartoon. There was no narration. There was no soft music. It wasn't raining in the background. It was just, you know, what, what it was. Next, kitchen makeover and apartment tour. Now, it's been suggested, and I'm inclined to agree. I think Cynthia did clean the apartment not right away when Tommy passed away. I know those oxygen tanks were gone as soon as he passed away because she couldn't wait to get those out of there because she didn't use them anyway. Um, some of his things were probably purged from the apartment. So there probably was a little more space. But if I've been... When she's moving things around for this apartment tour, I swear, some of it looks like she just shuffles shit from one corner to another, finds a clean corner and says, I cleaned here now. Because if you look in the reflection in the kitchen remodeling, there's piles of shit behind her. So, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, and the old curtains that she had hanging up, they looked like they were right out of the package, never never ironed, never unfolded. Um, nope, they weren't. I know for a fact, because, you know, I do that kind of stuff. You do that, Mark? I, but no, I, 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 I iron them. Oh, he irons them. I'm very lucky I never iron. Mark irons for me. I'm very spoiled in that way. Of course, I buy wrinkle-free clothes because... I don't like ironing, and I'm not particularly good at it either. So that's just how things, that's how it rolls here. The best secret to a long, successful relationship, screw up things that they ask you to do so bad that they never ask you to do it again. Uh-huh. Best way to build a relationship. Right, Mark? Uh-huh. I thought so. So... This is when I noticed Cynthia was having an issue with her hair. And this is not because I want to tear Cynthia apart for having, like, ugly hair or something. I think she likes her hair. I think she puts effort into it, and she colors her hair a lot. You have to care a lot about your hair to do, to do your roots that often. It looks like she missed the back. Now, I don't... I vaguely, vaguely remember her saying Tommy might have helped her with her hair. And if that's the case, then it all makes sense. It all makes sense why it would be not as maybe she would like it to be. But if I'm misunderstanding that and that never happened and she's doing it on her own, she's missing huge patches in the back. And I don't even think Toner would bring that up. Um, and maybe she's going for a split dye in the back. You know, maybe she wants yellow and white. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it looks different. It doesn't, it doesn't look like how I think she usually likes to keep it. And I know she doesn't ever go to a salon. She always does her own hair. She cuts her own hair. She dyes her own hair. So, um... I don't know. Maybe she'll maybe she'll take a look at it. I, I I have very little hair, so if I dye or color my hair, I can like do the Helen Keller and just feel it. I don't have to look. So, and then <laughs> she put up the rest of the the. It was like a Benny Hill sketch. Watch it at one and a half speed and sing to yourself. Na 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 na. It's pretty much how it is. Sorry, folks. It was like twenty minutes in. So. Next video, spill some tea. And they still have the Jimmy jail police icons up in the corner. Again, Jimmy is not discussed in most of the videos with that. It's meant to be just a call to him if she thinks he's watching, I guess. So she's talking about the mega life changes that she's making. Um, changes in her sleep schedule. I know Tommy worked second shift. So uh, when he was alive, they lived on second shift. One of the first videos that I think turned a lot of people off and that got a little bit of backlash to Cynthia was when she received a care package, Amazon Fresh, from someone. 
And one of the first things she did was complain. There's no point in calling anything else. It was complain that the package came too early in the morning for her because it came at like seven in the morning and they didn't get up till later. Now they were on a different sleep schedule then, but anytime a gift shows up, thank you is usually a good way to start. So I don't know. Um, Betty called. So I guess they're going shopping and she got a ton of fan mail. So that's very exciting. Uh, let's see. She talks about standing in line for games and how she would never want to go to a stadium again for like football because she's she likes football, I guess. She doesn't follow much sports, doesn't really f seem too interested in sports. She liked the Cowboys, though, for some reason. She said that the first time she ever went to a stadium, I guess it was Giants Stadium, and she went with Jimmy. Old friends from back in the day when they were younger. Jimmy has said as much that they were very kind to him, I guess, when, when they were younger. So... Um, she said she's too old to sit outside like that at a game, unless it's for a PlayStation 5. You hear that in the back? <laughs> Get out your checkbooks. Um, and then she's talking about just, like, what's new on TV. Um, you know. She said there was a scene in a show that was upsetting because it was about stalking. Okay. Oh, God. She is scared and traumatized and terrified because he was looking for her. Actually, he wasn't. He was looking to avoid her. So that he could place things when she wasn't there, I guess. It sounds like, I mean, he would knock on her door if he wanted to. He wasn't looking for her. He was looking to fi looking to have her find So I don't know. I guess that'll all shake down in three weeks or whenever the, the papers come. I don't know. There's legalese that I don't understand that goes into it. You try to Google it and play Google Lawyer and, and you think you know what you're talking about and you don't. Um, I, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. She said she has some tea to talk about, but as of today, there was no papers yet. So, scared and traumatized. And she said, every time, this is again, this is where we're going to diverge into Cynthia is, C Cynthia is the way she is, but when we get into talking about Jimmy, I think she's just not well. I don't think she, I think she breaks from reality around this specific issue, the same way she did around Stan. All of a sudden, she just stops thinking in, in our agreed upon reality, and there's some alternate world where she's you know, the queen of revenge for some reason. So every time his parole comes up, she's going to be there again and again because he's going away for five years. Um, and then she said, what about your accomplices or people having children? Maybe you should shell, sell out your friends, get an attorney. What about my pain, suffering, and mental anguish? And then she shows her hammer. <laughs> you know, she said, the paperwork is coming. You know, there's no paperwork yet, but God knows everything. That's her backup in case the paperwork never comes. She can say that God will, God doesn't like ugly, God will find you, some, some, some. And then there's a video of Blue Jay sitting on her windowsill. This is the 15th video, okay? They eat peanuts. Yep. That's it. Fan mail, I love you guys. She's cold. You hear that in the back? <laughs> and um, somebody had sent her makeup, food, and a Mrs. Potato Head doll, which... She graciously accepted, but she looked as confused as I was. <laughs> I'm, I'm not mad at her for looking a little befuddled. I was a little befuddled. This is Potato Head. I would have thought it was almost trolling, except she knew the people who gave it to her. So I don't know. And as to gifting, just to touch on this for a second. Um, like I said, people know that there's a couple people, maybe three or four. Well, there's a, a couple of people. Two women. And then there's a few other people who send gifts pretty regularly to Cynthia, weekly. Um, and they're more than just like, you know, cards or a token of affection, affection, something to this, or, or a celebration of a birthday or an anniversary or some commemoration. It's because it's Tuesday or because it's something I thought you might like or X, Y, Z. Um, but there's a fine, like, should, is it, would it be right for Cynthia to at some point say, thank you. You've been so incredibly generous to me. I, I, I can't accept this many gifts. It's been thousands and thousands of dollars at this point. I mean, the stakes were almost half a grand, you know? So at what point would you say, no, it's too much? On the other hand, I think of the people who are giving that much and think it's, it's an interesting mindset to give that much to someone you don't know, who has told you that you are only frenzies, and who you've seen cut people off at the neck <laughs> for saying very mild, very mild things. Um, anybody is on the chopping block. So 
I, I I don't know. And then there's the interaction between one of the individuals who has a sister, I believe, who has a disability, and Cynthia, um, that I that I kind of take exception to, and I'll I'll mention. Well, I may as well mention that now. So there's two individuals who give Cynthia gifts a lot, and again, that's their prerogative to do. They can spend their money as they like. I find it highly questionable, but I'm not their power of attorney. I'm not their representative payee. I am not their trust guardian. Any of it. So, and unless they have one who doesn't know about what's going on, they're free to do what they like. So, Cynthia will speak to one of the individuals who is sending the gifts and who allegedly has, not allegedly, my God, has a, has a disability. Um, and she speaks to this person who I believe is an adult in a kind of a childlike voice. Now, th th Cynthia did not invent doing that. That is not something that Cynthia is the only person that does. Many people do it. My own prerogative um, after working in and around and with alongside folks who have had disabilities is if a person is 40 years old that has, let's say, like an intellectual disability or autism, I try not to talk to them like they're nine. I try to give them the respect that they've lived on the earth for the same 40 years that I almost have and just say, hello, my name's Steve. How are you doing? Not, hi, I'm Steve. How are you? You know, um, because... They're 40. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, it could be a matter of preference. It also depends on rapport with the person. So I'm not saying what I do is right, wrong, or hard and fast rules. But it's another perspective. It's another way to extend respect to a person. And also to take into account that there may be other things going on as far as spending money that have nothing to do with Cynthia at all. It could have to do with the routine of, of buying, sending, watching, buying, sending, watching, buying, sending, watching. So there could be other things going on at the same time. Um, so I just wanted to put that, put that out there in, in, in that little spot. Let's see, what else did we get to? She's cold. Let's see. Dollar Tree Halloween Sock Try-On. No wonder I wanted to skip this. I wanted to go right over to the next video. This is for the first, this is for the, like, the, this is, it's not the first one. There's a playlist called My Sexy Socks or something. This is for the foot fetish folks. It has to be because nobody else could possibly watch this. Unless you are just one of her viewers who will watch anything she puts up, you would not sit there and watch this. You would have to be into it. Um, I watched a few minutes and as soon as the first sock came off, I turned it off. Don't tell me I missed anything. Watch, probably all the details and spilled tea about Jimmy are buried in the middle of this video and nobody knows because nobody watched. But... So it goes. Next, Acme $115 grocery food haul. And this was done by Instacart. So, oh no, it wasn't done by Instacart. She went to the store with Betty, excuse me. What happened via Instacart was that five days ago she bought $178 worth of food, assuming the timeline is sort of correct. So that two weeks worth of food she had to buy more of four or five days later. Now she did buy diet food this time. She bought more diet food this time. Well, she got the five cheese pizza, but it was portioned out as low calorie. Croutons, fake crab. I like fake crab on a diet too, because you can eat like the whole pack. <laughs> I'm a calorie fat counter. I'm kind of like Cynthia in that way. I, I grew up in the 90s, so I don't do low carb. I don't do keto or any of that kind of stuff. Calories and fat is usually what I count. And when I do it, I, I lose weight. Um, her dressing. Now she bought 10. Okay. She bought 10. It's Maple Grove Farms of Vermont, sugar-free Bowles McVinaigrette. Two tablespoons are 10 calories, I think. I used to look for fat-free, low-cal crap, too. Red flag of the eating disorder, if I can tell you the nutrition content of food that's not in front of me. She bought, like, 10 bottles of it. Now, here's the thing with bulk buying. I remember the last time she bought, like, a dozen bottles of this same exact dressing. Okay, I remember the haul. I also remember, was it shortly after Tommy died? Or it might have been when Tommy was in the hospital and she was staying home by herself a lot. She used a bottle of this dressing, which had expired like a year earlier, to put on her salad. Which means that bottle expired a year earlier, which was probably good for like 18 months when she got it. So it sat around her house for like two years, two and a half years, from the original haul. My only point in that is that, yes, when I go on a diet, I have big expectations, too, and I buy all the diet food at once, and, and we certainly know some other women on YouTube who attempt weight loss as well through various different means and various different modes, 
and buy a bunch of diet food also, and then it spoils and goes bad, and they throw it out. Or they're eating it two and a half years later, because something came up and they didn't eat it. Um, I understand why she buys in bulk, but eh, I don't know. I hope she's committed, because if that's all she buys, that's all she that's all she's going to have to eat. Three packs of scallions. And then she caught herself having an attitude. She caught herself being a snob. I can't buy that. That's not brand name. Mm. What is it? When we used to, when Cynthia and Mark and I were all like, we're buddy buddies. We were talking about air fryers one time. And I said our air fryer, we got ours like on the cheap. It was like 60 bucks, maybe a hundred, something like that. And I think she ended up getting like the Ninja Foodie. And she had said, well, we got the expensive one. So I don't know about this, that, that. Oh yeah. Where we is it? We always buy the cheap stuff. It, I think, I don't know if the hoard has been excavated enough to get back, because that foodie was a couple years ago, the Ninja Foodie. If it's there, use it. Potatoes? Potatoes are great for a diet. One potato is about 100 calories. She's done potatoes on weight loss. She knows she can do that. She's not a carb counter. She would. Next. <laughs> oh, no, I forgot the grocery list. There was a free sandwich, a firecracker chicken, which she'll feed to the outsiders. You feed spicy chicken to cats. Yeah. <laughs> You can go clean up after the outsiders if you do that. It's not even, it's, you shouldn't give that spicy stuff to any kitty. Yeah, but you know. And another three dozen eggs. So that was eight from the first one. And uh, three from this one, I guess. So that was kind of a lot. It's kind of a lot. Next, number 19. Are you still with me? Are we here? Are you here? Okay. Trying new lipstick. Walmart Beauty Box. NYX Butter Gloss Review. She shows off. Her eye makeup. Her left eye looks like she got beat up. It looks like yellow bruise. It's not. I don't think anything happened. No rumors. But the coloring around here doesn't look so nice. Halloween crafts from the Dollar Tree. She's wearing a glittery mask. Looks like a broke down Mardi Gras girl. She found some glue sticks. 25 for for $1.37. Who knows how long they've been carrying those around. And it's just over eight minutes, and she's developed no shame in her game in saying this video needs to be 20 seconds longer so I can add more ads. And then bullshits for 20 more seconds and then adds the ads. There's a level of candor there that's refreshing, but on the other side, it's so... I don't know. It, it, that, uh, sickening. That's sickening, a, sickening. That's a word. But that's she gotta word. pay the bills. She gotta pay, yeah, she's just trying to pay the rent. You know, the end of the month is coming. So, then fan mail with Betty. Um, she's still cold. It's only 51 degrees. Now, I can't, this I don't get. She can't be the only person in the building that's cold. It would have to be cold for everybody. I'm, the only time you don't have independent, where I've lived, I, me, I, I shouldn't generalize either. When I've lived places and paid the rent where the utilities were included, um, heat, like I had heat and hot water included because it was all gas or whatever. Um, they had control over when they turned the heat on because the utilities were included in part of the rent. Where we live now, we have electric heat, but we pay the electric bill. So we, if we blast it, it's on us. Um, is everyone in the building cold? You know, is that just part of the procedure? Is, is there a specific date where the landlords are obligated to turn the heat on and they're not doing it one day earlier because they don't have to? I don't know. Um, she had a package from two people. Uh that she opened. See, I struggle with like one-sided friendships. Like it seems like Cynthia has, like the lopsided ones she has with some of the people that are her, well, I guess they're viewers, they're not friends, so it doesn't really matter. And the reason I struggle with it is because I've had so many where I was the lopsided friend who was like, take, 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 take. And then when you need something, it's like, oh man, I'm so busy. <laughs> I'm so busy. I would burn through friends really, really fast. I had some patient ones who were very forgiving that after burning them out, like during my addiction, they were pissed. Like five years later, you know, eventually I started to be able to break the ice and rebuild some trust. And that's still a process. And that, you know, that was eight, nine years ago. So it does take some time. But Cynthia doesn't really, like, she doesn't really have any friends. And when you're a person like that, you don't even really have friends. You take hostages because you set terms unmovable terms to being in friendship, in relationship with you. And if they're shifted, even the little spit, you're gone. You're absolutely gone. Um, it's a certain kind of a personality 
type. I don't want to throw labels on it exactly, but if you know what I mean, you know exactly what I mean. And you know exactly the kind of person, because there's one in your life somewhere who sucks the life out of you. <laughs> and then when you need something, you just know you can't go to them for anything like that. Um, it's like that. Oh, and Betty, who's in the thumbnail, in this 27 minute and 40 second second video, she's in the video for exactly 41 seconds, opening a gift from one of Cynthia's fans. 22, tea time and what's new? Jimmy Police Jail? Cynthia found out that you can't say fucking bitch on Instagram. It was commented right there. Can't do it. Um, and then she said she's had it up to here with everyone. She's complains about complaints that people have about her. And then she lets the complaints and the fucks just fly and she doesn't care anymore. Um, this is the new Cynthia. Don't mess with her. Because... Um, she's pissed about Jim Boy in the yard. I gave him the look of death, the guy that's working out outside. Um, can't afford my electric bill if I get heaters, so I can't get any heaters. So we should probably take a collection for the electric bill. Um, and then I started thinking of the people that are wholesome and that watch her. You know, the ones who she waves to through the camera and speaks to in a childish voice. Like, would you go, hey, thank you so much for the gift. Did I tell you I was kicked off Instagram for calling someone a fucking bitch? Yeah, that's nice. Still cold. She has a new channel coming out called For the Birds. She only has a couple videos out on it right now. It's like wildlifey stuff. I'm so excited for this. I want this channel to take off so we don't have to, like... No, ah, yes. no more foot videos, oh, <laughs> no I more agree, spilled I tea. Agree. What is there dramatic about a skunk, you know, or a squirrel or a bird? Unless you're feeding them fried hot chicken. Again, there's, I mean, there can always be a little something. But no tea, uh, no stocking papers, just quiet videos. I hope, for her sake and ours, because she said she doesn't want his cha her channel like this. It would give me less to talk about, but I don't care. It's fine. This isn't my bread and butter. I can pay my rent. So this is not that big of a deal right now. Um, and I, it seemed like she thought she could pay hers for a while. And now she's back on. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything here? Oh, okay. With the new channel, uh, if she gets a thousand subscribers, she will go live. She will not go live. If she gets a, she will not go live. She will say it's the haters, it's this, it's that. Honestly, I think it's two things. I've been in a live with Cynthia. She did them before, and she had m many fewer subscribers. Much fewer. The fewer-ish, however you, you may. Um, she only had like 4,000 at the time, and so the live only had probably 50 people in it when I was there. She has such a big channel and has grown such a colony of people that aren't mm, thrilled with her, who may mm, want to show up and voice that that she would need moderators at the ass and she doesn't trust anybody. And her reading skills are not particularly strong. And chats move fast. Chats move very fast. And for how fortunately or unfortunately popular she's become, a lot of people are gonna show up and it's gonna be going quickly. So I don't think she'll be doing a live. And I guess if she had a few moderators, great, but I don't think she trusts anybody to moderate. So, and if you volunteer, don't expect to be her friend the next day because you're gonna do something wrong. Tiki Tuesday, loose change, New Jersey lottery ticket. She lost. Fan mail, yummy goodies. So after all those egg whites, <laughs> she she got some, well, it wasn't bad, but she got candy, 60 minis. I think it was Baby Ruth, um, Butterfinger, and, and something else. And then some hot cocoa. Next video, Hunter and Checkers watch the Blue Jays. They watch birds. That's it. Finding myself being happy again. So this is, she's coming into her own now. She's finding her way. She's sowing her oats. This is her eat, pray, love moment. Okay. So she goes out to the park. Um, she, <laughs> okay. This makeup wasn't good even for her. I wish I'm going to channel Miss Glory Gloria here. She looked like a beat up prostitute. <laughs> she didn't look good. She didn't look good for Cynthia. And Cynthia, you know. Um, but... Maybe there's nothing to dress up for. She was just going to the park to get some air and play with her drone. So, you know, um, she's looked better. I'll say that. She's looked better. She used to really do it up when they would go to New York. She'd flat iron her hair and she'd put on the red lipstick and she'd put on the nicer clothes that she owns and, and you know, go out. But 
So she's out there in public. Uh, no benches, even though she wrote and complained. She's that, she's that Karen. Um, no mask. Well, I won't say Karen. She's that kind of person. Because Karen seems less than fulfilling. Because I know a lot of men who do the same kind of thing. So Karen seems lacking. Uh, she's going to fly her drone. Chasing squirrels with it. Then she's feeding them peanuts. I don't know. She's very excited on the drone. Which was built... If this was the Marlboro drone, it was built on the backs of subscribers who sent her Marlboro points and were then blocked. You're welcome for the drone. I think Terry would say you're welcome for the drone. There's quite a few other people that would say you're welcome for the Marlboro drone. Um, and this is interesting that she's out there so free and carefree and fancy and, you know, footloose. Um, because she was just in fear for her life and traumatized like a day and a half ago and didn't want to be outside. Now she's, she's okay. Um, and she says, you know what? I'm out living life and you should too. So she leaves the house twice in one week and now she's going to be an inspiration to people to get out and live life to the fullest. Spare me. I'm glad you're getting out. I'm glad you're doing more things. But, nah, nah, nah. No thanks. I, I'll, I don't want your advice. Um, she ch chatted in the park. She talked about, did talk about, this is the kind of thing I like to hear. She talked about the difference between filming alone and filming with Tommy. And unfortunately, the way she described it, she made it seem like it was a lot easier and less of a burden to do it alone. Um, she said, I turned off my phone. I'm out here enjoying myself. Next, t video 27. <laughs> There's a blue jay in the window. Maybe if I take my glasses off, it'll hurt less. Um, blue jay in the window, that's it. 28. Boxy Charm on October unboxing from the same couple folks who sent her stuff four times in the last week. Uh, they got her a one-year subscription to this beauty box. So, next, Protocol Captor GPS FPV. I can't verify any of these. I copied it right off of what she wrote. Uh, drone flight test review. She tests a drone. It made me nauseous. It was like the Blair Witch the way it was flying around. So, cat and kitten play with catnip toys. That's all they do. They play with catnip toys. For, from Russia with Yum Box. This was a gift from a sub. It is snacks from Russia. Mushroom chips, jelly, candy. Cynthia is relatively polite when she tries something she doesn't like and says, oh, that's different. More Russian chocolate. And then the last video, which came out just a couple hours ago. She might post another and I might miss it. Airing the dirty laundry. Cold. Is anyone else cold? She's still cold. Uh, she's doing laundry. Uh, she talked about trying to sleep without sleeping pills and how it really didn't work. Uh, yeah. She's coughing up a storm. She's totally flushed and then talking about masks and other people getting sick. Uh, she talks about being able to, having to take four hours to get up in the morning. This is what I touched on before. When she has to get up, it takes four hours for her to loosen up. Um, Mark takes a while to loosen up in the morning, too, because he has, um... He has a disability, but he's not disabled, if that makes sense. Like, he's still functional. It can be disabling, but he's not everyday disabled. Um, and I've known people also who have had their back fused and other surgeries. And it does take them time to get going in the morning. But eating a few Percocet and sitting on your ass is not warmed up. Like, that's... Wait for the painkillers to kick in so I can do something. Um... I know physical therapy is helpful for some people. I know there's other modes that people do, and I know that it's been tried before. But there's more than a few ways, just in case anyone's curious, that people prepare for their day if they have chronic pain than to get up and sit around for four hours. Just for everyone's edification. That's all. From speaking from first person as someone who lives with someone who has a disabling condition that makes it difficult to be mobile. There's other ways people go about getting mobile in the morning. So... Uh, she goes to, let's see, laundry. People are doing laundry endlessly, and they're on the lower level, the dryers. So if they dry and they're not there, she's throwing the shit on the floor because she's having that kind of a day. And then she does her little <coughs> COVID cough. Um, this video has to be done or I can't pay the rent. Now, we've gone over this stupidity before. AdSense pays on the 21st. Okay. So she knows right now whether or not she can pay the rent. Does not matter that the first of the month is right around the corner. She would have known a week ago if she could pay it or not. And she's not paying her rent, plus trips to Acme, plus Instacart, plus beauty boxes, plus, plus, plus drones, plus, plus, plus on AdSense from YouTube. The money's coming from somewhere else. So 
You don't hear her crying about being homeless as much anymore. The fact that she doesn't need the money now but is still crying poor is the sin, really. So, anyway. Oh, so she's going off on masks. And this is the closest thing to political we will get with Cynthia. And it's not even political. It seems like a common sense thing. Because this, this example could be about any country in the world, about any level of politics. So she's watching the news. And I'll just say the names. Kamala Harris is on with a Secret Service agent. And Cynthia says that they're wearing N95 masks with masks over them. And she says, they get them, but the real people, we don't get them. Well, since when is Kamala Harris's Secret Service agent and head of pandemic disbursement of protected personal equipment? Like, who's in charge right now? They're the people that should be looking out for you and your equipment. Not like... Not the next guy, the current guy. You know what I mean? You can't blame the people who might be on deck for something that's happening now. That's, that's stupid. Okay, so nothing to talk about. She teases next week talking about Jimmy, maybe a tea video. Again, she's paranoid, so I'm not going too much into the Jimmy shit because she's fucking, she can't, she's not well. She's not well when she talks about Jimmy or Stan. She's just not. She's not all there. She breaks from reality. She doesn't make any sense. Just, it's not even worth addressing. I feel guilty talking too, too much about it because it feels like making fun of a person who's not well, kind of. The rest of this bitchy, self-centered nonsense, I'll talk about it. I don't care. Um, so for someone who's not nosy, I have to say, she knows the occupations of people in the building. She knows when they work out, what their hobbies are, when they're coming and going, when they cough out their window when they leave the yard open. She knows quite a bit for someone who doesn't look out the window very often and never listens at the door. Um, and at the very, very end of this, she says there are no court papers yet as far as she knows, but they're coming and he's going to, and Jimmy's going to jail. So if you're still here, thank you, because this was a long ride. Where do we go from here? Well, this new channel thing, I don't think is gonna explode but I don't think it's gonna go away. I think she'll put up some bird videos and if it doesn't catch and she gets a thousand. What it will be, and I heard another reactor say this, it'll be an interesting test to see how many of her actual subscribers on Cynthia Beaumont channel will follow suit with her requests and go right over to that channel and subscribe. If, you know, she has 15,000 subscribers, you would think even if 10% of them went over, she'd have 1,500. Um, if 5% went over, she'd have 750. And you would think if they were fans of hers, as she likes it, they would do that just because she asked them to do it and they like her. I didn't check the sub count over there yet, but we'll see. It'd be an interesting way to track it. Um, more tea videos, probably. I'm interested as to why papers have not come in the mail yet, but more will be revealed, I'm sure. She is certainly not shy. And this new Cynthia thing, this Stella gets her groove back thing, I don't know. Uh, people are going to have opinions on her weight loss. I'd say show it anyway, because there's bigger YouTubers who get more reactions about fighting about their weight loss. And if all you care about is views, and that seems to be the only thing you care about, talk about that. Otherwise, do you, do you, and you do you as well. So thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe. Hit the like button and the bell on your way out so you get the alerts. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark or on Twitter. Our handle is at Smokey Steve A. Our email address and our contact information is all listed down below. Thank you again and we will catch up with all of y'all tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Bye. Say bye, Mark. Bye, everybody.